and I just want somebody to know I'm ready to take you one-on-one. -on -one. I, got, I got skills, even at 42. Now, if you put bugs around your bed, just don't bring those in, you know. We've had a couple of scares with people, I found these around my bed, no, no. We're gonna be doing the, the dance, as you know, oh. first, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm hiding. No, I don't want to, why don't you do it? Go and get Jerry to do it while he's sitting there doing nothing. Hi, my name is Ashley Pellerin, Smith County Ag and Natural Resources Extension Agent. Well, I kind of normally start my day just uh, sometimes with a cup of coffee, depending on what I got to do today. This morning was one of those coffee days. I generally drive to work, try to get there about 8 o'clock, uh, harass my coworkers a little bit. You know, it's not fun if you can't have fun with your coworkers. So, uh, generally get in there and check emails. Uh, sometimes they come in after 5 o'clock or I'll get text messages in the middle of the night asking questions about goats, plants, different things. I try to be available to my clients, but also setting up a boundary that you can text me. You may not get an answer that night, but I'll get you in the morning. Good morning, love bugs. Happy Hanukkah, Chad. You gonna give me a hug today? No. Come on. You know we can't do that. A high five at least. All right, high five. One day you're gonna give me a hug, I promise. <laughs> All right, what you got up today? Fighting with 4-H Connect. Yeah. So I think I won, maybe. The gruesome threesome is who we are. We wreak havoc all around Smith County. <laughs> hey, Gloria. All right, bye, Jesse. See you. Have a blessed day. You too. Tyler is, has a population of a little over 100,000 people. I cover Smith County, so it's kind of doubled that, so it's about 200,000 people. Uh, Tyler's considered the Rose Capital. Tyler is so full of agriculture. Smith County is so full of agriculture. That's what we've based ourselves on. Our top commodities are um, cattle and hay production. We have uh, four schools. Tyler Junior College is the biggest one, and that's one of the top rated uh, junior colleges in the state. But the struggle that we see in agriculture is that they've lost their ag department because they didn't have enough student enrollment. See, today we got a program. It's a, it's a minority outreach program, an informational program set up by the Minority Landowner Magazine uh, in partnership with the NRCS office, which is the Natural Resource Conservation Service. I work well with the NRCS office um, already and I'm hoping to forge a new partnership with the Minority Landowner Magazine. And hopefully Victor Harris is somebody that we can work with in the future. He's, he's doing great work in the community. His magazine really showcases uh, minority landowners and farmers and ranchers all over the U.S., which hopefully one day one of my producers will be in that magazine. I'm working on it, working on it. The first extension agent was actually in Tyler. He was here in Tyler, so we're kind of the home of extension, if you want to kind of put it that way. The next speaker is going to talk about effectively using the extension service. Her name is Ashley Hellerin, and she's the uh, Department of Extension Program Ag Extension Agent. I always get nervous before I speak in front of people, but when I get up there and I talk about my job and what I do, I love it so much that I feel like I want to tell the world about what I do. All right, how many of you actually know who your extension agent is in your county? Minus the people in Smith County, I see you. All right, so having a relationship with your extension agent is vital because when you go to these uh, different agencies, when you go to USDA, when you go to NRCS, they're gonna say, okay, well go home and do this. Well, when you go home, are you gonna remember everything? No, so your extension agent is that source of information. If we need to pull up some of these forms online and go over them with you, that's what we're there for. We're there to uh, be a source of research-based information within the county. How do you get information to me? If you have a dead plant, pull it up and bring it to me. If you don't want to pull it up, say it's a watermelon that's falling apart, you don't have to bring it to me. 
What you can do is use your smartphone or use your friend's smartphone to take a picture. You know, we want those kind of pictures to kind of give us a clue. If we can't figure it out in the office, what we do is we forward those pictures out. And we try to help you get your question answered because a success for you is a success for everybody. You know, as an extension aide, I got to know what's going on in the county. I have to know. The only way I know is if I come and talk to you. A lot of times they were shocked when, when I first walked in. You, when you think of an ag extension agent, you don't necessarily think of a, a young girl in her 20s. You know, you think of an, an older gentleman. And, and to see me come through, with, uh, it's different. Like I said, we're a jack of all trades. I thought I was going to be working with goats the rest of my life. And <laughs> here I am with community gardens and organics and, and crops. And it's an, it's an exciting thing. You know, don't think that your case is strange. Don't come to our office and think that we can't help you. You know, it's like a treasure hunt for us. When we go out to your farm, dang, I ain't never seen this before. Let me pull it up and go figure out what it is. Bring it in a bag. Now, if you pull bugs around your bed, just don't bring those in. You know, <laughs> we've had a couple of scares with people. I found these around my bed. No, no, it, we're going to guess about what that is, and we're just going to we're going to let you keep that. I love my clients. <laughs> they are a hoot. Uh, they're, they're, my, they're my second family. Since I don't have any family here, they're the ones who I rely on. And they learn as much from me as, as I learn from them. They invite me over for dinners. They invite me to church. They invite me to their place. They invite me into their families. <laughs> yeah, that's killing. He, he was, he was, he's a man. He's yeah, you know, man. he's down in Elkhart now doing yeah, uh, fertilizer sales. Yeah, man. And I've got a, uh, a pesticide license. The IPM? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. In, in that turf grass conference, we get five CEUs, so it'll cover everything. If, you need, if you're missing an IPM, if you're missing a, uh, a general, if you're missing yeah. the laws and regs, yeah. Yeah. we cover all of that. Today was great. I had a blast. The program was great. The participants asked very good questions, very in-depth questions, and the facilitator was spot on. Hey, Mr. Williams. I'm good. Hey, Taryn. Taryn Moore is actually one of my former 4-H students, and he owns his own farm. <laughs> you know, you don't hear that a lot from kids, but even when he was in high school, he would come back and sell bushels of peas uh, to his high school classmates. How you doing? Good. So that's Mr. Sam. He's one of our 4-H fathers. And this is his land. That's his house up there. What you been doing, Mr. Williams? This is Mr. Williams. He's our landowner's president. Yes, he does a very good job. I, I know we're going to lose after a while. <laughs> Give me a six-month head start, Ashley, when they get ready to leave. Take you from here. Whatever, I just got on the board for the food bank. I at least got another two years. So y'all got me for some time? Ashley almost every week sends me emails about leadership conferences around the community. A few years back, she actually taught me something that really helped me out in my field, cover crops. She uh, gave me some wheat, some winter wheat, and I planted some of that back there for when, after pea season, you disc it up and then you plant it to keep something in the soil to keep it from eroding. And that really, that really has in, in, improved my yields in, my, in the field. You know, it's nice to see that when my older clients are no longer with us, that there's a following, that there's people who want to continue to do this. And I feel like that's a driving force behind why I try to keep my clients uh, connected with each other through the Landowners Association of Texas, through small farmers and ranchers, through 100 uh, ranchers, organizations that tie them together where you can see the lineage, where you can learn. There you go. Uh-uh, you still not out. Yeah. Come on, man. Tearing up people's yard. Hey, baby. How was your drive? Oh, my God. Uh, Carmen Sosa is, um, she, she's a real go-getter. She, she came here from Dallas. We came here about the same time. And 
She was the first person I met. She was like, I just moved here from Dallas and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I said, well, I just got here from Houston and I don't know what I'm doing either, but we're gonna learn. And, and that's kind of where our friendship started. And I was like, okay, who can I call? I was like, Carmen? Oh yeah, you know you're always welcome here. Absolutely, and such a beautiful day too. How are the chickadees? The chickadees are doing great. I've got two molting right now, so they're a little bit in distress with the cold weather, yeah, but yeah, they didn't right. get the memo. They need to wait till spring. <laughs> so <laughs> Good. what about the garden? How's that coming? I just pulled two asparagus spears out of the garden. Well, that's so enough for dinner. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> or a snack on the way to make dinner, right? She had always had a desire to start a farmer's market. She wanted producers to get their produce out, and she wanted them to really thrive and, and benefit from what they were doing. What are in these bags? So these are bags from the porch culture coffee roasters. They're the bags that they sell the coffee beans in. Mm -hmm. And we're using them at the St. Paul Garden. And the fifth grade boys are using them as little planters. What is going on with the St. Paul Garden? It's growing. We've got fifth grade boys that have taken ownership of it. And so now we're deciding what's gonna grow where. Um, they're thinking about keeping half of it for their family and selling half of it at the farmer's market. What? I know. The cycle of growing is ever-changing from climate, weather, soil, bugs, um, that there's always something new to learn. I think that's the common uh, need with all of our farmers that I work with is just access to knowledge. This is where I planted everything the deer and the chicken like. <laughs> And then everything else that they didn't like, like um, I planted out there. Oh, here's my harvest. <laughs> that is, some, you this know what? It's a little wimpy, but those, and it's pretty tasty. <laughs> okay, Karma. Do you like asparagus? No, I don't. Oh, it gosh. makes your peace thing. Here, I... <laughs> Carmen has um, tried to get me to expand my palate. I've done that, but asparagus, I, c I can't get with asparagus. It's just, go oh, ahead, yeah. eat your asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. Yes, we did have uh, an alligator. We had two. Um, I thought the big one was six foot, and um, Moose, the dog, got caught in an alligator trap. It was just a little noose trap. and. Um, when I rescued him out of the alligator trap, my neighbor told me, oh no, we're looking for the mom. And the mom was 12 feet. So about every two or three years, we have a little alligator scare. But I think we're alligator free right now, so we're safe, I think. <laughs> I told her don't invite me back until they trap it, it's gone, and they have made a purse or a bag out of it that I can utilize in that way. If the weather get too bad, if you can't come down, I understand, but they still gonna try to do something tomorrow. Hello? Oh, backwoods driving. I think I lost it. How you doing, Miss Crawford? Fine, you? I'm well. Long time no see. <laughs> How you been keeping yourself? Welcome to Crawford Farm. <laughs> I like coming out to Crawford Farm. So Walter Crawford is a producer that I've been working with uh, probably more closely in, in recent years, but he has been coming to the Landowners Association of Texas meetings since before I was here. He has ventured into starting his own farm. Ashley is a godsend. She's phenomenal. Uh, above and beyond is the only way that I can describe Ashley. Come on in. Tell Hold them to on. Come on in. Winford Bowie is one of my most cherished producers. He is in his 80s. I won't give away his age, but he's in his 80s and he has been a cattle, a cattleman, a cattle rancher for most of his life. Oh, you on the up and up. You on the good side of this. I, I met some people today at the meeting yeah. and they were just, they were like, we want to get started in no, cattle. No, no, this, this is a seller's market. Hey, I tried. Uh, but you can't tell anybody when they well, see their old, that, well, they don't have land yet, so hopefully we got some time to work with them when, yeah, when it's stable out a little bit. Land. I tell them all that. It starts at the ground and works its way up, but you gotta wanna do it. It's not an easy thing. You gotta wanna do it. I love it here. I'm so glad that this is where I am at my life. It's what I enjoy doing. 
I'm helping the people who want to be helped and even those who don't know that they need to be helped. I, I'm absolutely in love with Tyler. Just another day as an Ag Extension agent. Okay, y'all ready? Yes. Can I say, ready? Yes. Okay, okay. And I just want somebody to know I'm ready to take you one-on-one. -on -one. I, got, I got skills, even at 42. <laughs>